creatives I thought I would just share with you how I create prints on wood and sell them in my Etsy shop I have to create one for or I have to make one for a client anyway so I thought well I might as well just record it so I can teach you how to do it so this is a print on wood I have a large format Epson printer where I can enlarge my my paintings or you know shrink them down and make them into different sizes and then I adhere them to A1 birch plywood three quarters inch thick and I get those cut at my local lumber yard I will insert a picture here showing you the dimensions of the large piece of wood that they cut down into different size pieces for me. There's a couple different ways I have them do it depending on what sizes I need. I'm going to guess that any lumber yard would be willing to do that for you. So once I get the wood in, oh let me back up. Another way to do it, if you don't have a lumber yard that's willing to do it, you can get these cradled boards at dickblick.com and do the same thing. It just, if you can do it this way, it's way more economical and your profit margin will be better. If you do it this way, you're going to just probably have to charge more for the piece and your customer will just have to pay a little bit more just because the cradle board is way more expensive than doing it this way. My, this is what I start with. This is the piece of birch plywood, three quarter inch thick, cut into an 11 by 14. It's completely unfinished. And to finish them, I paint the sides and the back black. Add a little zigzag hanger and a certificate of authenticity. I'm going to be adhering this 11 by 14 print to this piece of wood and I'm going to show you how I do it. To get started what you'll need is obviously your piece of wood, your print, golden heavy gel medium, a large, it doesn't have to be this large, <laughs> but the thing I usually use for my water got a hole in it and it was leaking everywhere and all I had down at the studio was this big beautiful hand thrown pottery <laughs> bowl. I did not make it but anyways I bought it at an art show. You'll need a brayer. You will need a piece of paper. I prefer paper that has a shine to it. Something that's going to not stick to your print. Okay, this is paper, this paper comes from the rolls of paper I get for my Epson printer. They're, cut, they're like rolled up inside of that paper. So I saved those for that reason. Okay, let's get started. Oh, and the other thing you're gonna need is a paintbrush. I prefer a one and a half to two inch brush. Just you get this at the hardware, Home Depot, Lowe's, anything like that, okay? Don't forget to bring your muscles to open up your heavy gel medium. I'll set that so you can see it. Okay, I prefer to have my piece of wood long ways, <laughs> long ways, okay, vertical. Let's just say vertical. Let me zoom out just a tad. Oopsie. I was trying not to show my messy workplace space here, but. I feel that you need to see what I'm doing here. Okay. So I'm going to wet my brush in the water. The, the key is you don't want this to go on too thick. If you put it on too thick, it's gonna create, when you, when you burnish it or when you use your brayer to <clears throat> adhere it to the wood, it can create lines and bubbles and it just can be a hot mess. So you want to water this down. And as you do these, you'll get better at knowing the consistency that you need. 
you want to make sure you have a nice like that kind of consistency right there it's not too thick you can still see the wood under it but it's completely covered you want to really make sure you get the edges and the corners that's where it tends to want to peel up on you if you don't have it if you don't have enough of the medium on there so I just go over it, make sure I'm getting it, you know, go both ways here, make sure you're really covering the wood. People love these because you don't have to frame them. If you want to frame it, you know, you can. But this way, you know, you have the back and the sides all painted, it's all finished, and it's just... It's a nice way to uh, sell your work. Makes it easy on the, like it's really thick right there. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that off. Again, getting the edges and the corners really good. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna take our print and we're gonna line it up in the corner here. Make sure your hands stay clean through this process. And then I just, I kind of just softly press it on like that. Then work quickly here, cover it. And then while you're pressing down, because your print can slide on you. So make sure you're pressing down as you're bra using your brayer for the top part of it. Getting the edges really good. And then I'll go up here and hold it down. And then I will do the bottom part. You want to make sure this paper doesn't move too. Because as you're rolling your brayer on there, some of that heavy gel medium might be oozing out at the edges and getting on this paper. And if it moves, it can get on your print. So peel that off. And our print is on there pretty good now what you notice here how it oozed out right there i just run my finger on that and get that off if you don't when it dries you're going to be sanding these edges and it just makes the sanding process that much more difficult so just kind of go along with your finger and get all that excess medium off okay now what you want to do take the clean side of this paper lay this down flat and then get some heavy books or something heavy and set on that and let that dry for at least three hours or more so I'm gonna pause this in the meantime while that is here for now I'm just gonna set this water on that's pretty heavy but I like to try to set something on that covers the entire piece so that I know that it's completely pushed down all around. Uh, so that's another thing, another point to keep in mind. Don't do this on a table that's, you know, uh, a plastic, or one of those plastic tables from Sam's or whatever that might have a dip in it or something. You want to do this on the countertop or something like that. So this table I have is perfect for this. And then while that's drying, you're going to want to wash your brush. And I will have a link below to a video where I show how to take care of your brushes. And I will be back later to finish this up. Something else you're going to need that I forgot to mention is a palm sander. You may already have one. These are just handy to have around. But you, you need something to sand the edges. And sanding it by hand would just be way too much work. This makes quick work and they're inexpensive. I'll have a link below where you can purchase this on Amazon. So I let mine, I let mine dry overnight and it turned out beautifully. Now what I like to do is put a coat of either gloss or satin varnish over top and then let that dry before we do our sanding and I'll tell you why because it will help protect the print from your fingers 
your finger the oils on your fingers and just help it as you're sanding to not ruin the print because it's vulnerable being that it's just a piece of paper on there so I'm just gonna take some satin varnish I use Liquitex satin varnish or the gloss I'm just using a foamy brush just because my other brushes are over by the sink <laughs> This works just fine. Make sure you cover the entire print. I have way too much varnish on here. And I don't like to waste varnish, so, or paint. So I just take it like that and soak some of that extra varnish up. Put it right back in the container. Alright, so I'm going to let that dry. And then we will go on to the sanding, which I'm just going to kind of show you how I hold the sander when I'm sanding. I'm not going to actually run it in my studio and create a lot of dust. All right, be right back. My satin varnish is nice and dry. I let it dry overnight, actually, because I got really busy in the studio yesterday. I just want to kind of go over how to sand your print on wood. You take your palm sander and you hold it at an angle like this. You don't want it to be too flat because you can scratch and ruin your print. You just want it at an angle such as this. And you're going to move up and down, up and down. On the corners, you're going to do the same. Round your corners. And then all four sides, you're going to do this. What that does is it makes a nice round and soft edge. Not to mention, a lot of times when you put your print on, the print, this print is actually hanging over top of the wood a little bit. You don't want that. It just doesn't have a nice look to it. Let me see if I can even get that so that you can see it. See how the paper's coming over top of the wood? So by sanding that down, it's going to make it look like this is an original painting. It will make the paper look like it was embedded into this wood and it just creates a nice soft edge a nice rounded edge and then after that we paint the back and the sides black and we adhere a certificate of authenticity on the back and a little zigzag hanger and it's ready to go no my bad then we put <laughs> after we get all that painted then we put matte varnish over top or you can do another coat of the satin varnish whichever you prefer and then we put the certificate of authenticity on it and the zigzag hanger so i will be back here in a minute took me all of three minutes to sand the sides of my print so as you can see it looks like it's just part of the wood now In the corners, see how nice and rounded the corners are? Now I'm just going to paint some black acrylic paint on the back. I will let that dry and then I will come back and show you how I paint the sides. I know it sounds basic, like why does she have to show me how to paint the sides? But I like to create like a grungy edge. I think it kind of frames the print nicely. And I just want to show you how I do that. Keep in mind, I like more primitive, subtle colors. So I do all of my prints on wood with a black back and black sides. However, you can paint, obviously, the back and the sides whatever color you want. So, for instance, if you have a painting or the print, maybe it has a lot of red in it. Well, you can paint the back and the sides with your red acrylic paint. Um, make it work for you. Okay, that's done. I'm going to let that dry and then I'll come back and we'll paint the sides. 
I'm going to show you how I apply the black paint to the sides. The back is already painted black and dried. So I just take about a one inch, no, it's not a one inch brush. That's so probably a half inch. This is a filbert. And I'm painting along the edge. Let me just get this whole edge painted. Okay, so what I do here at the top is I kind of bring the brush over top of the print a little bit. And see what that does? It just puts a nice little black line there. And it really makes the print look like it is part of the wood. I used to do retail shows and people would ask if the print was actually printed right onto the wood. <laughs> and I'd say, no, it's actually quite a process. And I explain, you know, how I do it. And they're like, wow, you know, it really looks like it's printed right onto the wood. And that's, you know, that's what I was going for. I want it to look like, or like it was an original painting. But, you know, you can tell by looking at it without, you know, that since there's no, like, brush strokes or texture they can tell it's not an original but they just it's funny because people would you know like I have them hanging in my booth and people would take them off the the hanger and and look at the back and look at the sides and I could tell they were like really puzzled as to how it was done some people would ask me you know how is that on there you know did you print that on the wood and then some people wouldn't ask me so I would just go up to them and say can I help you with anything? And, and usually we'd start the conversation and I would explain my process to them. But anyways, I just wanted to share this with you. After I get all four sides painted, I will just be applying a matte varnish. You can do satin or gloss, however you wish your artwork to look. But I like a little more primitive, softer look. So I will be using a matte varnish. The one thing you do want to make sure is that you want to make sure that this paint you're putting on right now is dry before you apply your top coat, whatever kind of varnish you choose, because if you don't, the black from here can get all over your print. I had that happen one time. So I usually, you know, let it dry. If I'm, I'm usually not in a big hurry, so I just go on and do something else while it's drying and come back to it later. Um, if you're in a hurry, then, you know, use a heat gun and dry, quick up that drying time. Quick up that drying time. Speed up that drying time. And you'll be good to go. So I, for the sake of this tutorial, I think I will use my heat tool, my heat gun, so that I can speed this up a little bit. So I use Liquitex varnishes, and again, I'm using the matte varnish on this. And just to make sure that your black is dry, just kind of go around the edges. Well, my, I was already, <laughs> that was not a good example. <laughs> I already have black paint all over me anyways. So just rub your finger along the edge, and if you see no black paint on your finger, then you're good to go. So the matte varnish, I just squirt some on there, usually starting at the center and working my way out, using steady, soft strokes, not getting too rigorous with my brush strokes. Now, if you do it right and you get the entire piece covered the first time, you should not have to put on another coat of varnish, okay? because we already have the satin on there. So this that would make it two coats of varnish, which will be plenty to protect this print. The problem is this, if you don't cover it completely, then you might have where the 
where you don't cover it, it's going to be a little bit more shiny because of the satin finish that was the first coat of varnish. So just hold it up to the light so that you can make sure. See, I usually it's around the edges that I will miss a little spot. So just make sure you hold it up to the light and, you know, I can tilt it and I can see that I have covered the entire print completely. All right, so there's some little bubbles in there. It's not to worry. When this dries, those bubbles disappear as, as it's drying. So um, no big deal. Okay, looks pretty darn good to me. Just I'm just continuing to look just to make sure I didn't miss a spot. I think I need a little bit more right there. All right, that's it. That is all you have to do. So I will wait a couple hours for that to dry. And then I just, once it's dry, Lord, once it's dry, I flip over the print and I put a zigzag hanger on it and I um, adhere uh, using an ATG tape gun. I adhere my certificate of authenticity and it's ready to go. So thank you for joining me and I hope that you will use this process with your artwork. Peace out.